The scatter plot shows the relationship between two sets of data. And we'll look at different kinds of data that they show. Uh, you guys should recognize this from Algebra 1 um, we, and maybe even 8th grade. We talked about scatter plots a lot. Each dot represents two different things for one situation. Maybe it's a person and how many siblings they have and how many cars they have, things like that. So here I have three examples of scatter plots. Uh, this first one here, we call this a positive correlation because it is going up. Uh, if you're following it like a line, it is all going in an upward direction, uh, so it's a positive correlation. The next one is a negative correlation because the um, points are, or the dots are going down, so we have a negative correlation. And the last one, you'll notice the dots are all over. There's really no pattern, so this has no correlation. Okay, so let's go back and talk about this a little bit. A positive correlation. So what's happening is if something on the bottom is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Something on the side is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, let's see if we can think about this. Uh, let's say... Um, let's say the bottom x-axis is the number of years you're working and the left or the vertical axis is the amount of money you make which would make sense the more years you work the more you make per hour or, or per salary for a negative correlation as something is going up something else is going to be going down um, so let's see if we can figure this one out okay so I'm going shopping I have a bunch of money with me the more hours that I shop so that's to be the bottom this is how many hours I've shopped uh, the less money I have, so it shows how much money I would have left in my in my pocket. And then no correlation, um, so let's just say there's no there's nothing that you can see as a pattern. So maybe this is the bottom is the number of letters you have in your last name, and the side is the amount of money you make every hour. Uh, there should be no relation there whatsoever. Okay, so the idea is on this next one that we would do a correlation um, together as as a as a group. Obviously we can't do that because we're on um, video. But if you think about it, the number of kids in the family, so we'd go around and I'd say how many kids do you have your family? So let's say you have three. And then I would say how many number of vehicles do your family owns? Let's say your family owns two. We would put that point right there. Then the next person, they have four kids in a family but they only own one vehicle. And then the next one, they have five kids in a family and they own four vehicles. And maybe we have someone that has one kid in the family, but they own three vehicles. And so the idea is this probably has no correlation. Uh, if it's not no correlation, we would think it probably has a positive correlation because the more kids in the family, the more vehicles you'll need to transport them. And the last thing on this page I want to talk about is correlation versus causation. Be very, very careful about these words. Correlation just means that they're related. Okay? So, um, for example, the number of years you work and how much money you make, they're related. Usually, the more you work in a job, the more money you make. So every year you get a raise, that kind of thing. However, it's not a cause. Just because you work somewhere for a long time does not mean you have to make more money than someone who hasn't worked there a long time, unless it's a typical job. Teachers, for instance, um, it doesn't matter how good a teacher you are, it's how many years you're there and at what lane you're in. So if you have your master's, you make more than someone with just their bachelor's. But um, the more years you work as a teacher, the more you make. So that would actually be a causation, because in a causation, um, one thing actually causes the other. It's a direct cause. It's not just related, it's a direct cause. So the teacher salary is an example of a causation, whereas a normal work salary would be an example of a relation. Let me give you another relation. Um, the number of hours you study for a test and your grade on the test. Typically, the more you study, the better you do. That's not a cause, though. If it was a cause, we would have lots of people getting A's that worked really hard. But unfortunately, sometimes people can work really hard and not get a good grade. Or the other way around. We have a lot of people in here who probably don't study all that much, but yet get really good grades. That's very lucky for you, but it's not a cause. Correlation. The number of hours you study, the, um, the better your grade is a correlation. Causation. 
I go to Dairy Queen, I buy four burgers, it costs me $8. I buy five burgers, it costs me more money. So the more burgers I buy, the more money I spend. I caused it because I'm buying more and more burgers. That is a causation. It's a direct cause. Now, on the MCAs, they're going to actually um, check and see how much you know about this. And so just be very careful that causation is a direct cause. All right. Now, we need to look at something called the best fitting line. You're actually going to use this quite a bit in this class. The best fitting line is used to predict the value in a scatter plot. So when I go to previous scatter plots, which I can't on this video, I apologize for this, but if I was to look at previous scatter plots, okay, so we've got dots going like this, and let's say that I want to know what happens when x is out here. What I can do is I can make a trend line, which is basically a line that goes through the points at the same slope as the points, and you try and get as many points above as, as you can below it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take from this x value and I'm going to dot it all the way up and I'm going to say, okay, where is this point right here? At what point is that on the y-axis? Okay, and then I would say, okay, right there, that's what I'm going to predict. So a best fitting line is actually very, very useful and something that many, many statisticians use. So today your job is to make best fitting lines by hand. Tomorrow we're going to work on calculator. So by hand, number one, you carefully draw the line that best follows the pattern of the scatter plot. You want the same number of points above and below the line, but you also want the line to go on the same slope as the points. Number two, choose two points on the line. They do not have to be the data points from the scatter plot. So as soon as I have that line, I don't care about the points. I just care about the line itself. And where does it cross the grid so I can get two points? Because once I have those two points, I can find the equation of the line. And then we can use that equation to make some predictions. So I want to show you an exact problem. So here we have an example. The data pairs give the number of U.S. births from 1990 to 1997 where x is the years since 1990. So if we're talking about 1991, x is 1 then, because it's 1 year since 1990. And y is in thousands. So you have 0 and 4,158, 1 and 4, 1, 1, 1, 2 and 4, 30, 65, and so on. So what I've done is below, Below I have um, made a graph, I've already started it, and let me quick put the points in without recording so you don't have to waste your time. So there are the points, and now I'm going to draw a line that go through the points. I'm looking at getting, um, let's see, so they go down, the line's going to go down, I want about the same number of points above and below, so let me see if I can get a line here. Oh, that's definitely not the line I want. Can I move it? Yes, I can. However, it's at the wrong slope, so let me get rid of that. Okay, let me try that again. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to get the same slope, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. There we go. Good enough. Hopefully you can do a better job with the technology that you have. So now we're trying to figure out um, the equation of this line, I believe, is what we need to do. Approximate the best fitting line for the data. So here's the line. So now I want to get the equation of this line. I'm looking for two spots that it intersects the grid. So if I'm looking here, it intersects right there, and this is really ugly. Let me get a new um, a new pen mark. I need it to be thinner, and let's make it blue. So I'm looking where it crosses the grid. This is going to be good enough right there, and then, oh boy, um, how about right there? So if I label these two points, I have 7, 3850, and then here I have 11, 3650. So now I need to find the equation of this line. So we'll set up our table like we normally do. We have 7, 3850, and 11, 3650. Here it's going down by 200. Over here it's going up by 4. So we have negative 200 over 4, which would be negative 50. So there's my slope, y equals negative 50, x plus b. And then I pick a temporary solution. Let's just pick the top one. So I've got 3850 in for y, 
and negative 50 times 7 in 4x plus b. Uh, let's see, we have 3850 equals uh, negative 30, or 30, 350 plus b. Add 350. And let's see, we've got 4200 it looks like. Hopefully I'm right. If not, you can fix that. So now we have our equation y equals negative 50x plus 4200. If I look, um, it's always a good idea to take a peek at what did you get for your b and does it match? Is it close enough to what your line is? And it's, it's pretty close. We'll call it good uh, for 4200. Now if, if I got 5 right there, I would look back and say what I had to do with bad with my math. Now part B says to use the fitted line to estimate the number of births in year 2000. So let's see, 2000 is how many years after 1990? Um, let's see, that would be 10 years. So I'm looking at 10 and I'm following it up and I see that I look like I'm at 3700. So I would estimate that there's 3700. So that was using the line to figure that out. I could also do that by plugging in 10 right there for x. And so we have y equals negative 500 plus 4200. And 4200 minus 500 is 3700, which is what we predicted earlier. So there's two ways of doing that. Shoot.